one of the worst things you can do is unwittingly use mp3 sourced samples. To demonstrate this I've prepared the following loop. I'm using Voxengo Span and with this setting you'll see basically the blue area is the main sound and the white area is just the stereo difference. So the white area just shows the difference between the left and the right channels. In other words, the white area is the stereo content and the blue area is the mono content. This becomes a little bit more important in just a moment. By the way, Voxengo Span is a free plugin. You'll find a link to it in the video description, as well as my settings for it that I've used here. So what would happen if this was encoded into an MP3? Okay, so this cheeky chappy here is Isotope Ozone Advanced, and it allows us to encode MP3 on the fly in real time so that we can listen, and in this case, see the effects of an MP3 encoder. Now, I've started with the lowest bit rate, which as you can see here is 96 kilobits per second. That's to give an extreme example of what an mp3 encoder can do to your audio. So let's have a listen. It's not an absolute disaster. It sounds all right considering that a 96 kilobits per second mp3 file takes up way less space than a full-size WAV file. And you have to bear in mind the fact that on YouTube everything is being compressed. So even when I disengage Ozone you won't hear the uncompressed signal obviously. But I want to draw your attention specifically to the high frequencies on the analyzer on span. Now the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that there's high frequency loss above about 15 kilohertz. Now obviously this is the 96 kilobits per second encoder, so it's more extreme than say the 320 kilobits per second, which there's still some high frequency loss, but it's not nearly as bad. However, that's definitely worse than not having the encoder on at all. Let's listen to that again. Now that definitely sounds better to my ears, although there's not a great deal in it necessarily. And now I want to draw your attention to what an MP3 encoder does to the stereo field. In 96 kilobits per second, you can see that not only have we lost high frequencies above 15 kilohertz, as we have in the mono, but there's also some clear high frequency shredding. By the way, that shredding also occurs in the mono part of the signal, but it's a little bit less pronounced and certainly less easy to spot. So as you might expect, the higher the kilobits per second, the less damage there is to the high frequencies in particular, and the less damage there is to the stereo field. However, of course, every MP3 encoder is lossy. There will be some loss of high frequencies, including some visible shredding, and particularly in the stereo field. Now, as I said before, streaming this video, you're not hearing the full quality sound anyway. It's always encoded. So the difference between the 320 kilobits per second and the uncompressed lossless version will be lost in this video. However, I can tell you there is a little difference. Now, it might not always matter, but the reason why I produced a high frequency rich loop is because most of where it matters is the high frequencies and in particular the stereo field and even more specific than that because it affects the high frequencies it often affects transients more than it affects anything else that's the very first initial attack of each hit which again is why i've used this kind of example i can hear that the transients have lost some of their character and therefore we've lost some fidelity in fact the problem goes even deeper than that because sometimes you can purchase a sound library maybe it's an old classic one on a cd or it's a download or it's downloadable content sometimes unscrupulous sample content creators just rip sounds from mp3s and maybe they process them a little bit sometimes they don't but the point is once the high frequencies and stereo image are messed up well it's not completely a lost cause but it does make things much harder than they need to be are there ways to restore mp3 quality samples yes i can think of a few ways to do that there are some products specifically designed to help with that kind of issue but it's very very unlikely to be as good as 
starting with the real thing and it might be a lot of very fine detailed intricate difficult work to get the sample sounding as good as it would however this all really depends on what you want from the sample let's say for example you have a kick drum sample and you're only interested in using the low end and you're only interested in using the mono sum well you don't care about the high frequencies and the stereo field being messed up so potentially you could use an mp3 kick drum that probably makes a few of you cringe i don't care it works it sounds good but personally as a rule i try to avoid using encoded audio or transcoded audio which is where it might be saved as a wave file but at one point or another it was ripped from a streaming service or converted from an mp3 or some other lossy format even if it is in a lossless format it's wise to check the high frequency and the stereo content using an analyzer just as i have and final thought i suppose i'd better come back at some point what i'll do is i'll do another video in the future on how to repair audio that's been damaged by an mp3 encoder it's not ideal but if that's the only audio you have and you want a way to work around it there are definitely methods that will help so that will be in a future video that's all for now